हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सिंथेसिस आईएएस एकेडमी अ ब्लेंड ऑफ आइडियाज टेक प्लेस अबाउट मी आई एम संदीप भूषण थुमला एंड माय क्रेडेंशियल्स आर आई हैव 10 इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज एंड आई टेक अप इशू बेस्ड करंट अफेयर्स एंड दिस सेशन विल सर्टेनली हेल्प यू टू क्रैक प्रीलिम्स एंड मेंस एग्जामिनेशंस बिकॉज़ throughout my session i would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases and these keywords and key phrases will certainly help you for preliminary examination that is you can identify the factual analytical and conceptual questions which can be framed for the preliminary examination and it will be useful for mains examinations because while you are imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing so your answers would be certainly precise and concise and once your answers are certainly precise and concise so you will definitely score higher marks in the mains examinations so thereby my session will be an important one and it will be in depth and a better and thorough understanding and a comprehensive understanding of the entire topic so do get benefited by my session and then do follow my session completely and today's topic is table top airports and its safety so while we are focusing on the table top airports and its safety we will also look at the sub topics which are very very essential for the comprehensive understanding about the table top airports and its safety how it can be important for important or a critical information for the upsc prelims as well as mains examinations so i would be discussing about the table top and why these table top airports are in news and what are the uh, documents which have been by the international civil aviation organization which talks about the operations and we will also focus about the role of the air traffic control in regards to the pilots landing the aircraft on the table top airports and we will also focus at the recommendations by b n gokhale in regards to the table top airports which will be very critical and information very important information for mains examinations thereby again we will focus at the safety measures which has to be taken up by the civil aviation ministry in regards to the table top airports now we will get into the topic and before that i request that everyone please go ahead with subscribing the synthesis ias academy so that you can get the notification of all the issue based current affairs topics which i am taking up daily which will be very very useful for you all as a civil servant aspirants and now we will focus at about table top so when you look at what is table top so an airport which is located or built which is located or built on a top of a plateau or on a hilly surface on on a hilly surface on both ends a runway which is overlooking a drop which has a drop is called as a table top airport is called as a table top or airport so you can see it here so this is the plateau this is a plateau wherein you have the runway and definitely the other side will have a slight slope so this is the table top airports so these kind of airports are definitely referred as a table top which is on the top of the plateau and or on a hilly surface and these kind of airports in india that is the table top airports in india are at or they are named as lenku in the uh, area which is in mizoram and you have the table top airports in himachal pradesh which is in one which you have in shimla and kulu and you have a pyongyang which is in sikkim and mangaluru which is in karnataka kozhikod and kanur both are in kerala so you have the table tops in india and this is also a crucial information for preliminary examination because there could be a possibility of a question being framed in the preliminary examinations that which among the following states have the table top airports because this was in news that is why i am making it very clear how it can be an useful information or a prospective question for the preliminary examination point of view and as for 
the international civil aviation organization icao there is no such term called as stable top airport please do take it into consideration if the question in the prelims is one of the statement which gives that the international civil aviation organization also terms or there is a term called as stable top airport in international civil aviation organization technical document no in the icao technical document there is no such term called as stable top but as for our india statutory aviation body so which is india statutory aviation body it is dgca so dgca that is director directorate general of civil aviation refers to these kind of airports which are located or built on the flat top of a plateau or on a hilly surface area terming them as the table top airports but technically in the technical documents of international civil aviation organization there is no term called as table top airport but the india statutory aviation body which is dgca it refers these kind of airports which are built on plateau or hilly surface as table top airports in this manner by way of how why because it is highlighting the safety measures while they are terming these airports as the table top airports the dgca is highlighting the safety measures which have to be taken during the operation on the runway of these airports please do understand that they are referring to the highlighting the safety measures during the operation on these runways which are built or located on the top of a plateau or hilly surface and why these are in news i mean why these table top airports are in news because we know very clear that it was on may 22nd 2020 also we have seen that a risk has taken place that is in regards to the air india express a flight which was from dubai to mangalore on may 22nd so it has highlighted the operational risk so definitely this is an incident wherein it has taken place 2020 so this has taken place and this is definitely an area of concern in regards to the safety of the passengers and in regards to the landing procedures on the runway and the flight ix812 had hit an antenna and then it has steep down the embankment and then 160 passengers and six crew wherein 158 have lost their life so this is why it is in news and then if you look at the airport wherein the incident has taken place is the kosigod so you have a runway which is of 2700 meters in length so the runway of the table top airport in kosigod is 2700 meters it was 2860 meters but it has been shortened to accommodate an safety measure that is called as runway end safety area so this is the keyword resa r e s a so you have the safety area which is called as runway end safety area and that runway safety area is of 240 meters so in the entire 2000 860 meters the entire kosigod runway they have been shortened and the last 240 meters are the safety measures which we are talking about the runway end safety area and what does it do so that it can limit the consequences wherein an aircraft can overrun during landing or a a rejected take off so when we when it is landing or at the take off also this runway end safety area is taken into consideration as a safety measure and that is of 240 meters and in total it is of 2860 meters so definitely this is the keyword runway end safety area and a table top airport operation in regards to the international civil aviation organization it says that the runway end safety area or the resa should be mandatory of 90 meters and it actually that is international civil aviation organization it recommends the runway end safety area to be recommended 
to be 240 meters but mandatory is 90 meters so look at it we are looking at the intricacies of the airport or the runway which talks about the runway end safety area should be at the last at the last it should be 90 meters why because this will help in aircraft so that it will not overrun during the landing or during the takeoff so that is why it is a safety measure and the runway hours instrument you have the instrument landing system which is enabled at in the tabletop airports so that so that they will have a range of visual aids and this range of visual aids will include simple approach lighting so that the pilot can try to understand or he can get the entire um, yes, view of the land of the tabletop airport in regards to the landing or safe landing in the or on the runway of the tabletop airport so it is very clear that the instrument landing system is another keyword which you need to focus which is enabled and the airport has a range of visual aids so that they will have a simple approach lighting which includes for the safety landing and we have seen the largest aircraft which has been also been used on the tabletop airport is at Kozikod is India's 423 seater Boeing Jumbo 747 which operates from Jeddah to Kozikod or Kozikod to Jeddah sector so this is the largest aircraft which has been in operation on the tabletop airport in Kozikod also and we will look at what is the document which is being taken up by the ICAO that is International Civil Aviation Organi Organization in regards to the operations of tabletop airports. So we will focus on the document which is being provided in regards to the operations of the tabletop airports by the International Civil Aviation Organization. So we have a document that is 9981 document by ICAO which serves a guideline so it, it provides a guideline for what it provides a guideline for compatibility study and operation of larger aircraft in a comparatively smaller aerodrome so definitely the tabletop airports are comparatively a smaller aerodrome compared to the others compared to the other airports so definitely you have a document wherein you that document serves as a guideline this is very important so the document is the guideline which has been framed for the compatibility study and the operation of larger aircraft this is what is very important that the DGCA also should be very clear about the among I mean the, the larger aircraft or the smaller aircraft which have to be landed or which have to be in the process of landing on the tabletop airports and there is an in the in the document or the guidelines it's very clearly talking about an issue so what is the issue the mentioned in the guidelines or the document of the icao it is growth versus aviation services so definitely aviation services is also worried about the growth which is the and worldwide issue and this worldwide issue has to be dealt because these aircrafts which are landing if they are larger aircraft in a smaller aerodrome it is a cause of concern it is a cause of concern so definitely there has to be a safe manner or mechanism put in place so that the the safety of the passengers are also taken into consideration and also when there is a demand for air services in the existing airports the guidelines have to provide so that the safe landing has to take place and in the documents it is also mentioned about various elements to be assessed which includes the aerodrome infrastructure that is what we are talking about if there is a demand for the air services to grow in the smaller aerodrome that is onto the tabletop airports in the tabletop airports so there is an element that we need to I mean there have to be an aerodrome infrastructure growing and its ground handling capabilities and aeroplane characteristics how should all of these should be assessed and then they have to make sure that they are taken into consideration before 
the larger aircrafts are given permission to land in a smaller aerodrome. The elements to be assessed are aerodrome infrastructure, ground handling capabilities and aeroplane characteristics. So these three have to be these three have to be assessed. I mean these three elements have to be assessed so that the guidelines which clearly talks about the importance of the growth versus aviation services and the elements when we are talking about it has to be assessed even in regards to the technicality to see whether there are compatibility for new types of aircraft that is it could be a larger aircraft which can operate in a smaller aerodrome and the guidelines or the document also talks about the safety assessment which has to be done in regards to the assessing the risk associated with the operation with the operation of the higher category of aircraft that means the higher aircraft or else the larger aircraft which are supposed to land because of the demand so that pro proper safety assessment also should be done and risk mitigation measures are also suggested in the guidelines by the ICAO wherein the risk the risk mitigation measure should be very minimal and it should be in a in a tolerable limits so whenever there is a mishap that has to be in a very minimal and that mishap or the risk should be within the tolerable limits within the toler tolerable limits and this is the risk mitigation measure this is the another keyword and here another keyword and then the guidelines also talks about a compatibility study and a safety assessment report so why this compatibility study and the safety assessment report so that it can be scrutinized by the regulatory aviation authority that is dgca so that if if the compatibility study and the safety assessment report are found satisfactorily then there can be a no objection certificate given by the DGCA that is Directorate General of Civil Aviation for what? For operation of such higher category aircraft and that to be by the regulatory aviation authorities that is DGCA. So this is very very crucial the guidelines which are being provided by the ICAO in regards to the operation for the higher category aircraft on the tabletop airports or on a smaller aerodromes and now we'll focus at the role of air traffic control so definitely atc has a role in regards to the mitigating or in regards to making sure that the operations or the landing of the aircrafts are safe and then there is i mean the risk is very minimal so air traffic control do have the role so atc has only had jurisdiction so its limit is to provide the pilots so atc has a limited jurisdiction and what is that limited jurisdiction it is to provide the pilots with the weather condition so it will give the information of the weather condition in regards to the visibility in regards to the rain and winds to the pilot so that the pilot will decide whether there is a a, a, a clearance given by the air traffic control to go ahead with landing of the flight on the tabletop airport so the atc has a jurisdiction which is in regards to providing the pilots the information pertaining to the weather condition which is which includes visibility rain and winds and once the atc gives clearance then the pilot can land but the atc will not give clearance to commence to approach if visibility is poor so whenever the visibility is poor so the air traffic control do not give the clearance to the pilot to land the flight onto the tabletop airports or else in in regards to any any what you say airports but when we are talking about the tabletop airports and the role of atc in regards to the safe landing of the aircrafts onto the tabletop airports because it is certainly a risk because of the limited runway but if the visibility meets the requirements but if the visibility 
is in regards to the requirements which is been provided by the guidelines of the DGCA, then the ATC cannot stop the pilot. Please do understand. If the visibility is poor, then the ATC will not give clearance to the pilot to land the flight onto the tabletop airport. But if the visibility meets the requirement as per the guidelines of the DGCA, then ATC cannot stop the pilot in regards to landing or not giving the clearance to the pilot to land the flight. Then the pilot commences his approach, that is flight's approach. When the visibility is within the minima, that is there is a visibility that the pilot can take a decision and can land the flight onto the tabletop airport and descends. That means he comes down towards the runway to land. So that is the role of the air traffic control and you have a height, a point called as, you have a point which is called as decision height, DH, which is normally around 200 feet in case of instrument landing system and at a point called, you have another point called as minimum descent altitude. So in this case, you have a point, one is in regards to the decision height, which is normally 200 feet above the the uh, runway and then in case of instrument landing system you have another point called as minimum descent altitude in case of non precision approach that means whenever you do not have a exact precision in regards i mean the pilot do not have the exact precision and that is a non precision ap ap approach then the pilot must be aware of the runway environment so definitely the runway environment should be totally known to the pilot and that itself makes it very clear that the landing would be a safe landing and the passenger's life would be protected. That means the pilot has to know about the decision height, he should know about the instrument landing system and a point of minimum descent altitude so that the precision point of the flight which can take an initiation so that it can safely land onto the tabletop airport and if the pilot if he has not having this entire what you say runway environment so he should be thorough about the runway environment he should have a thorough knowledge about the tabletop runway environment in regards to the making safe landing if he has not or if he is not getting that entire clearance, then he has to initiate a go round. That means he has to circle the he has to circle the runway. He has to circle the runway so that once he gets the entire awareness of the runway environment, then he can return to another attempt for the landing. Until unless he gets the entire precision approach. The pilot, until he gets a precision approach, the pilot cannot initiate and he can, he should go ahead with another round, another circle and then return and then go for another attempt for landing. So look at it, how important the role of ATC and the pilot in regards to the safe landing. And if the declared visibility meets the prescribed minima, that is the visibility is very clear that the pilot can go ahead with the landing then there is nothing wrong in pilot attempting an approach for a safe landing. And now we will focus at the recommendation which have been given by BN Gokhale. And this again will be a crucial information for you all in regards to the mains wherein you can put it as a short notes in your answers, in your answer writing. So the recommendation by BN Gokhale. So the he has given a report on the crash, on the crash, that is crash and he is the court of air marshal, that is BN Gokhale, who is the former vice chief of air staff, Indian Air Force and he has made a series of recommendation and his document in was having or constituting of 191 page and he has submitted the document on October 2010 and then he has addressed these documents, I mean the recommendations are been addressed to the airline operators, especially to the Air India and Air India Express. And these are being put forth to the airport authority of India, AAI. 
and it pointed out various issues. That means the recommendation of BN Gokhale has highlighted various issues in regards to the crashing of the flight which has taken place in the year 2010. We have seen in the year 2010, a decade back, which has the an aircraft had landed and then it has crashed. And then exactly after a decade, again another incident in India on the tabletop airport. That is why it is crucial for you all to look into this as an issue based topic for prelims as well as mains examination. And the recommendation in regards to the pointing of the issues in the recommendations are it has said that avoidance of downward slope because I made it very clear in the first slide itself that the plateau on the plateau you have a runway and you have a slope here definitely this is a slope so you the recommendation very clearly talks about the issue of having a downward slope in the overshoot area particularly on the tabletop runways so this downward slope is the cause of concern and it is, it is an issue which has been recommended by BN Gokhale and he has also recommended the need for a ground arresting system so what do you mean by ground arresting system so this is a facility ground arresting system another keyword please focus for the prelims mains UPSC perspective ground arresting system is a facility which has been maintained at almost all the airfields and at even the Indian Air Force and you should also have a visual reference system to alert the pilot so that he tries to definitely remain or maintain distance to be covered so that a safe landing take place and the location of ATC tower and its approach and area radars were also mentioned in the recommendations which are part of the issue by BN Gokhale and he has also mentioned about the role of rescue and firefighting services and aerodrome risk assessment. So these are the two points which have been mentioned in regards to the post crash the rescue and firefighting services and aerodrome risk assessment should also be taken into consideration and when we look at now we will focus at the safety measures. So what are the safety measures to be taken up or which has to be included on to the tabletop airports so that there is minimum loss or it is tolerable the risk is tolerable limits the risk is within the tolerable limits so this is very important and for that we will take up the various safety measures and you have the runway end safety area that is RESA which is popular and the term which is called as engineered materials arrester or arresting system so this is an another keyword which is useful for you all for UPSC prelims and mains point of view because it is a term which is called as engineered materials arresting system which is tossed up and which is mandatory at all international airports in United States and what does this do EMAS that is engineered materials arrester arresting or arrester or arresting system it is it is a crushable cellular cement or concrete it is crushable cellular cement or concrete what does it do it is used on the runway ends that is why runway end safety area it is used and what does it actually provide it acts as a safety barrier please do understand the importance of this safety measure that is engineered materials arresting system which has the crushable cellular cement or concrete uh, on the runway ends wherein at the end of the runway which acts as a safety barrier important and it is successfully and it successfully stops the aircraft in regards to overrunning or it retard or retarding effects increases that means it will stop or it will make sure that the speed the limit or the speed of the aircraft will be retarded it will be stopped it will be reduced it will be decreased because of the cellular cement or concrete which is used by the engineered lightweight or engineered materials arresting system it will retard it will stop it will decrease the effect or the movement on the runway so that it will not move away from the runway edges 
so that it will not move away from the runway edges and then a mishap do not take place and EMS is said to be ideal for the all the tabletop airports in India and they should be of 75 meters of EMAS that is the concrete or the crushable cellular cement and concrete which can serve the purpose of 240 meters RESA of RESA without causing any damage to the aircraft please do understand RESA is of 240 meters RESA that is runway end system and within this you have EMAS system and this EMAS system can have 75 meters within the 240 that is runway end safety area within RESA you can have EMAS which will certainly call, make sure that it will any kind of damage or any kind of mishap it will retard it will stop and the DGCA has maintained a monsoon minimum equipment lift li list as far as aircraft operations are concerned but it is very important what that all the international airports in the United States which has this EMS has to be taken care even on it should be and it is an ideal to be used in all the tabletop airports in India so I hope this session was very informative knowledgeable and then it will definitely make sure that you have had a thorough better and a comprehensive understanding of the tabletop airports which will be very 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 useful for prelims and mains for UPSC perspective so I would say a very big thank you to all and a good luck to you all and then please do like the video share the video and subscribe the Synthesis IAS Academy YouTube channel wherein a place of blend of ideas take place. So, I would say I would come up with the another issue based topics or issue based current affairs topic which will be certainly an informative and knowledgeable one for prelims as well as mains examination. So, I would say a big thank you to all and then see you again with a new issue based topic.